let's start off with a uh, letter from Kathy. Kathy is one of our regulars who has come uh, several times. And she had a really interesting question this time that has bothered her because, as usual, she did her homework on the web and then says, I'm getting too many different answers. Where do I go? She wants to install transparent uh, ceramic tiles. Okay, now that are glass tiles, actually. That's an interesting thing. Now, I assume they have a nice little tint to them or something because just straight glass so you can see through the glue uh, as such is not really exciting. And she's confused by the information on the web. She said, should I use mastic adhesive or white latex additive thin set mortar? And she says the manufacturer's website for the tiles uses mastic, but the professionals all suggest to be using white thin set mortar. And then she also has a question, should I smooth out the adhesive or leave the grooves? Well, I want to go in and take a look at something. I had a, uh, here's a thing on my website about apply, applying tile adhesive correctly. Now, this was talking about how to put the adhesive on and what goes on under the tile. Well, to do it, I use plexiglass tiles, which is exactly what she wants to do. So we can see her problem here. If we take a look at this, you know, whether using mastic like this or if it's thin set, when you run the spatula through, it makes these grooves. And then when you push the tile in, they spread out. And what you need to understand about that is that's why every tile says to use a certain kind of trowel with certain notches and the type of adhesive that you're using. And that is all designed so it, when you push that hard at 45 degrees across, so you have your, your trowel coming across like that, it will leave exactly the right amount of glue that when you squash it down, that should spread out to almost even and give you the exact thickness that you want for that particular tile, that particular application. So some of them need square grooves, some have triangles, some have very small ones, some have spaced ones. It all depends on the adhesive and on the tile. Now, here's the problem that gets going as we come along. This is a really good tile pushed in, and you can see the adhesive almost spread out to the whole area. This actually is excellent for a tile. It's good, good adhesion. Here, we put the adhesive in in swirls, and you see all kinds of air pockets. And the air pockets won't let the air out. And therefore, what happens is that the adhesive doesn't go down properly. In fact, it can even bounce back up. So if we look at two, here's one where we drew it in straight lines, which shows that the air never got stuck. So it's coming out the edge of the tile. Here, the air got stuck. And this tile actually wants to be springy, moving up and down or not staying in place. Or you come back later and it's shifted because the compressed air is down below. So number one, we always apply that adhesive in straight lines with the trowel so that it makes it right. Now, she says, but which one should we use? It's true that the mastic is often used in places where there's not a lot of water because it's premixed and it's really easy to get small quantities and to work with. It's not preferred by the professionals because it's organic. It can create mold underneath uh, and get into trouble. And so, uh, plus it slides a little bit more if you're working on a wall. So it's a little harder to keep everything in place. The professionals tend to prefer a thin set. And in the nice delicate cases, they use a white thin set. The problem is you have to have a bag and you have to mix it and get the right consistency. So a small do-it-yourself job and no experience, you're probably better off with the mastic. If you're doing a job that's larger and you, you can learn to get the right texture going right, as the pros do, they will all use the thin set. And that works better. And the white just is a cleaner. Now, how do we get her transparent tile, look back in the computer. Her, we want her transparent tile to go in here, but what we don't want is to see all these things or all of this mess, and I guarantee you, it's gonna have a lot of that underneath. Well, we can apply the ridges and go back and smooth it out a little bit, okay? That can be done. You just have to be very careful that when you smooth it out, you don't dig in too far on one side and get too high on the other side. That's why when we don't smooth it out, we know it's going to settle down flat. So we actually get a better job. You could smooth that out. The real secret is you take your tile and just before you've done the floor or the wall, 
Now, before you're ready to put the tile on, you do what we call back buttering, which means we put some of the same adhesive on the back of the tile with a smooth trowel, no notches. And then we smooth it all out, relatively even, fairly thin, but with a transparent tile, you could look through from the other side and make sure that you see there's no, there's no dry spots or no thin spots or no air bubbles. Work that out now. It won't go away later. So that we actually paint the back of the tile, if you will, the back of this transparent tile. And when we take that and put it down, the reason we back butter most of the time is we just get better adhesion because we know it's stuck well here and we know it's stuck well to the floor. So by back buttering here and checking for the look, then putting that on top, it doesn't matter if we still have ridges, you won't see through to the empty spaces between the ridges. So we can use the ridges, back butter, push your tile in, wiggle it down, and you'll get a good job. Okay, Kathy? I think that you'll, you'll get that with back buttering really being the key to making that work.